Hey y'all, it's Nancy the Handy Scandy here for Whimsy Stamps. Thanks for joining me on this Saturday before Sunday. I am making a last minute, it could be considered an Easter card, it could just be a Hello Spring, it could just be Happy Friend in the springtime, it can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> for this circumstance, I'm calling it a last minute Easter card, but really you could use it for any reason you want to make it. So you saw that I took some of the beautiful Whimsy Stamps pattern papers and I have several different packs that I'm using and I will list them down in the um, description box. If you're interested in finding those you can use those links and hop over to the Whimsy store. And I'm just trimming them down into different sizes, different widths. As you can see some of them are even different lengths and just gluing them together onto a piece of um, it's actually like a resume paper. It's just a white paper from my stash and I chose to just pull it out and use that as the base and I laid them down at an angle and now I have one of the um, dies from the new mix and match scallops die set and that's what I'm using there to cut out the base that will be um, this kind of a patchwork design with the striped paper. Now I am using what I believe is the largest of the rectangle dies. There are three sizes of the rectangle dies, there are three sizes of the scallop dies, which are also rectangular, to be fair, but um, in that blue paper you saw that I cut out um, the largest of the scallop dies to be my rectangular scallop base, as you can see. There's a beautiful stitching around the edge of both of these dies, the, the scallop as well as the straight edge, and not everybody loves loves the stitching. I love the stitching. It just adds, I don't know, a sweetness, if that makes any sense. Kind of, kind of an old-fashioned sweetness that can be prim, it can be vintage, it can be anything you want it to be, really. And then I took the largest of the stamps from the very sweet Easter Bunnies stamp set. Now this is new as well, and I just had to use it. Now I had used the other four images from that stamp set to make my ATCs a few weeks ago, and they're just adorable. They're just adorable. And yes, this is meant to be Easter, right? But bunnies and chicks are alive all year. <laughs> Lilies and tulips and daisies, you know, we have the whole like warm season season. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be specific to spring, I guess is all that I'm saying. And so I stamped it out on just some scrap paper from my from my stash. I wish you guys could see my white paper stash. It's crazy. So I use it as often as I can. However, I don't have it broken down into paper type. And sometimes I might get... Um, I don't know, I might get a paper that's appropriate to alcohol ink coloring and sometimes I might not and you know I just roll with it. That's just kind of who I am and how I craft. But um, one of the issues that I am facing is that I did not allow my ink to fully dry. And now I used, let me pull it out so I get the name right, I used my Versifying Claire Onyx Black ink which is fine. But it's not the most alcohol ink friendly, so if you're going to use it, you want to make sure that either you hit it with your heat tool to make sure that it's fully dried, or you um, do a little bit of embossing with it, or just set it aside till it's fully dry and, and not rush the process, which is what I do. And you can see that on the little chicks, I, I've kind of masked it a little bit, but when I was coloring, I picked up the alcohol ink markers, picked up some of that black ink and smudged a bit. But I masked that with the way that I'm coloring because mo for the most part I'm using like little dabby dots, <laughs> at least on the critters. On the bunny and the chicks I'm just using little dabby dots, if that makes any sense at all. So it's not really a pointillism per se, but I'm just kind of tapping it around and with that I'm able to kind of pick up some of that black ink that was transferred from the stamped image and unfortunately got onto the image itself. But I'm able to kind of smear it around, smudge it around so that it is not so prominent. The same happened on the pink bow, but again I think I masked it well enough with um, just my color blending of the markers. And so, um, yeah, so if you find that you make that kind of mistake, A, learn from it. <laughs> Move forward. Don't beat yourself up. Don't necessarily throw your image away because you can mask it. But yeah, just learn from that. Learn from me and allow your ink to dry. 
better yet use an alcohol ink safe <laughs> stamping ink but again you still want to let that fully dry now as far as the dabbing you can see that that's exactly what i'm doing on this little bunny and i'm just using my warm grays as you could see i'm using the zero warm gray zero warm gray one warm gray three just to dab on some color it kind of adds a texture but it also is a very forgiving coloring style if at least it is for me and so i pulled out some different browns again my olo markers i do still have some of my artezas and every now and then i put them to work because my olo marker range is not i mean it's a full range it's just not as full as i would like it to be so i like some other color options and when that happens i, I reach into my um my older artezas which i still love very much and i'm just finishing up the coloring making sure that i get some some darker colors in there just for that depth and dimension and it's okay if you don't because i am definitely not a realist in term well <laughs> started to say in terms of my coloring i am a realist in other ways but in terms of my coloring no i just get that color down and make sure that it's sweet and that it's cute and i keep it moving and then of course you can see that i'm fussy cutting my only tip really that i have for fussy cutting is that you move your image much more than you move your scissors and if you like um, a white border, you know, set that border and keep the, the scissor at about the same width from your I image as you go along. But if, if it gets closer or further away at some points, it's okay. Show yourself grace. It's okay. No one else is likely going to know that. So anyway, got it all fussy cut out. Then I felt like it needed some separation from that striped paper background. So I used that blue dye again or the the smallest actually of the rectangular dies to tr to cut out some of the blue paper and yes it has a little flaw in the paper but that's what I got and so I'm just going to mask that by my placement of the bunny and the chick image so just using my barely arts glue to put that scalloped rectangle down onto the white rectangle and the white rectangle is the second largest or the middle of the three rectangle dies from that same die set and again that is the mix and match scallops die set and I use a lot of them <laughs> on this particular card and I'm not mad about it I think they coordinate it coordinate so well but I just felt like the image needed some separation from that kind of um, it's not meant to be quilting, but it looks like quilting. That, that striped background looks like quilting. And then I use it again to cut out the, the mid layer on the sweet and the friend, and I think it's just adorable. Now, I do kind of wish that I would have cut out the actual words sweet and friend in white because I feel like that would have been a better contrast um, just against all of that pattern paper. But who knows, it may have blend, blended in too well because there's a lot of white in those pattern papers. But look at how stinking cute that is. I mean, that's just adorable. And then, um, yeah, so I have all three layers of both dies, the sweet and the friend. Now, I want to say that these these two word dies are on the last chance on the website. So I will definitely, I'll link to everything, but I'll definitely link, definitely link to these, my apologies. And um, you can check out everything that's on the last chance because once it's gone, it's gone. These retiring things, whether they're images, whether they're word dies, um, there's a lot of them. And once they're gone, they're gone. They're not coming back. So Whimsy is making room for all kinds of fun new things coming to us in the future. And I'm excited about that. I'm also sad to see some of these um, old favorites go away. Now, I took the time and the effort to do both the sweet and the friend, and by gosh, I'm determined to make them work. <laughs> so you see a lot of my process. So I already have the blue scalloped um, rectangle adhered to my card base, and then I have the small blue scallop adhered to the white um, layer there, and then I'm adhering it all together. So I did pop up the um, kind of patchwork striped layer on some foam tape as I did with the bunny and the chick image and so it does have some dimension I feel like there's enough separation between the the busy striped background and the bunny and I just felt like it was a little hard even though there's those scalloped edges and it's a sweet soft image I just felt like I don't know there were a lot of hard lines so I brought in this lace from my stash 
just added a little bit of glue up under that layer and just kind of squidged it in there. Now I did put some glue on the ends because I didn't want the lace to fray. But here I am trying to audition my sweet and my friend again, trying to get them both on there. And I'm persistent. Like, I want to make it work. Can, can I put them in different orders? Can I put them in different places? I'm okay when things interrupt the border like that. That doesn't bother me if things hang off the edge at all. I think that adds some interest. But um, in the end, I just decide I'm going to have to abandon the sweet <laughs> and save it for something else. And that's okay. That's, that doesn't bother me. I was persistent and I was determined to make it work on this card, but it just didn't. And so that's when I alter my um, my plan and I go through my stash and I find one that has the word hello, which you can see I've done here. Now this is from the very sweet Piggy's Crushed It stamp and die set. I've had this for a while. I need to use it some more. It needs to come out and, and get some more love because it's absolutely adorable. Adorable, pardon me. But I just used the word hello, and I am going to add that right above the word friend. And so we have just a cute hello friend, and that's why I said in the beginning this could be used for any time, right? It doesn't have to be Easter, though it is kind of an Easter-themed image. It can be for whatever time you want it to be for. I say hello to my friends all year, to be frank. <laughs> so I also added... A little more lace up to that top right corner just to again soften some of those hard edges so it doesn't cover up anything you know all of the sweet scalloped and stitching edges are are still very very present and very um, observable if that's the word I'm looking for I'm not sure but then I pulled out these beautiful prism um, I wanted to say scallops <laughs> nope man words are always hard once I turn that mic on oh Anyway, they're the beautiful confetti, and again, the name is Prism, and depending on how the light hits them, they might be a purple, they might be a blue, pink, they might even just be kind of a shimmery white. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So I love this card. I had a great time making it. I wish you guys a very happy Easter if you celebrate, happy spring otherwise, because if you guys are like me, you're feeling the wrath of the pollen, but that's okay because that means summer is just around the corner and then fall and then Halloween. I'm excited. <laughs> Thanks guys for spending some time with me. This has been Nancy, the Handy Scandy for Whimsy Stamps. As always, use those links. Um, join us on all of our social media and until next time, mwah, I'm out.